Collins is back at quarterback now. Where's in the end zone? Gets it away. Deep down the middle. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, give it. What? Fade me out, Dan. I'm not going to fade you out. For all you. right. There, it's out. So, all right, we've hinted many episodes ago about a political idea. Do you remember, Dan? No. Yeah, you do. That we thought could have, I thought, could have some serious Oh, legs. yes, that thing, yes. Remember I said, but I'm You're not ready to talk about, about it. it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and hopefully, you know, our regular listeners remember. Okay, well, I'm excited to say that we are ready to talk about it. And since we are, I thought it would be make a lot of sense to bring in the inspiration for this movement. Mm -hmm. And you could get to know my friend and business partner, Robert Cruz, a little bit more. So he's been listening to our pop culture segment. Robert Cruz, good morning. How are you on this fine Saturday morning amidst week four of quarantine? Good morning, Corey. Thanks for having me on the show. I was listening and I am one of the 100 million troll subscribers. I think I actually did it twice. <laughs> so, and it was a lot cheaper than going to the movies. So I think movie theaters might be in trouble. Yeah, yeah for maybe. sure. For sure. Right. And, and, and at least the ones that turned already were turning into uh, more of an experience where you could have dinner. Right, maybe right. they stick around. But the average ones, uh -uh, I'm watching it. it from my home. Forget it. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, Robert, you know, you're, it's your daughter's birthday today, actually, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'd like to wish my daughter Lola Cruz a 10th birthday. Today's her birthday in quarantine. So we're trying to keep our social distancing guidelines intact, but you can't stop a, a good party from happening. So let's hope we, <laughs> we don't violate the law. It, well, and more importantly, uh, a big shout out. To thank you to your wife. You know, we'll, we'll hit yes. on Mother's Day later, but, you know, the, for her letting you do this before all, the birthday yeah. party starts because the, that's a freaking miracle in itself. Right. <laughs> um, but she's the real brains behind the operation, just like at my house. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so again, so, uh, Robert, thank you for joining us. We're going to cover a whole bunch of, of topics with you this morning on what's going on in politics. But but before we do that, you know, for for our regular listeners, if you've remembered the past, this is this is Cruise for Congress that we've talked about before. Yeah. Okay. You know, Robert, uh, you're, we're going to get to know Robert a little bit more, and uh, I, I think you're, we think you're going to love the guy. So. Robert, you know, give us give our listeners a little bit of an insight as to who you are as a person. You know, we grew up together in the south suburbs of Chicago and, uh, you know, talked about where you came from and what you're all about. All right. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> my parents originally are from the Pilsen neighborhood, which is in the south loop, just south of the south loop. Um, my dad was a troubled youth, so he ended up in the Marine Corps. When he came back, we moved out to the suburbs where I met you guys. And my dad and mom worked in factories. My mom worked in HR. My dad worked on the assembly line. I actually worked there during the college years. It was uh, really good money. Um, but we grew up on the east side of Joliet, a little rougher part of town. Um, don't let this cute comb over fool you. I uh, grew up in some <laughs> tough areas, but it was all about character building. And then, you know, sports was kind of our, um, our life a little bit. Played a lot of football, a lot of basketball, a lot of baseball. I met you out there on the football field. Yeah, I got to stop you there. Got to stop you there. So this is an important critical point. So uh, football was our first connection between the two of us. Okay. And I have said publicly in very big uh, arenas that – Everything I learned about being a good quarterback, mm -hmm. I lear started learning in fourth grade from Robert Cruz, the best Puerto Rican quarterback in the history <laughs> of the world, All right, <laughs> who was a year older than me, and we had a fantastic Pop Warner program, and he was a year older than me, and he took me under his wing, and he taught me what it was like to be a leader at in fourth in freaking fourth grade. grade. How old are you in fourth grade? I whatever. You know, three? No, uh, what? Ten? Eleven? How how old is Lola? Is ten? No what idea. grade she in? She's Lola's ten. So she's in fourth. She'll be in fifth grade. So ten year old. So ten. Yeah. Ten. All okay. Right. And so and Robert. So you we, we would we would <laughs> we would come together and congregate in the in the Pop Warner football program. And how how much how amazing was our Pop Warner experience? Uh, it was it was top notch. I mean, we had great coaches. We had great guys on the team. Everyone kind of uh, felt more it was more important to win than it was to be the star. 
And that's how stars are born anyways. If you don't win, you can't be a star. So, and then we just had a lot of fun. If I remember correctly, the first rule of sports, according to Michael Jordan, is have fun. And we had a lot of fun. We did. So, so throughout time, so then you end up going to the private Catholic high school on the other side of the town I grew up in. I ended up going to the public high school. So you, so you go to a, a Catholic high school and talk a little bit about that and, and your experience there. You, I, I understand you had some success on the football field in high school as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we did. It wasn't just me. Um, I did go to the private school because a lot of the kids from our team were going there. Uh, recently, we just actually sold my mom's uh, our childhood home, and I found out she refinanced it five times so I could go to private school. Oh wow! Oof. So that no was uh, something. That was a great caveat learning as an adult. But but once we got to school, we did do very well. We um, we finished the, the top ten in the country both years that I started. And we had a very good team. We went on to a 50-game winning streak. It was uh, the bedrock of, of that school and its identity. And, and, and still today, people talk about it, and we're proud of it. But it wasn't done just me. We had lots of guys from that team that you're just referring to who all uh, helped as well. Without question. I, I mean, I literally – I've I had to make a decision if I was going to go to Providence or, or Lincoln Way. It was never really a decision because if I went to Providence, I wouldn't have got a chance to to play quarterback. Except well, for can I say year. something really quick there? <laughs> I was praying, Dan, that Corey didn't come to Providence because I had my transfer paperwork ready to go to the other private school. That had yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of here. Well, but it worked out fantastic because it if did. you know in in a, in a consecutive year, um, you know Roberts team won a state championship that year we lost in the state championship the following year we won the state championship and it, and you think about like there's a we pulled our our area pulled from a, a about three or four major towns right mm, three okay. towns and the, to have that much success and really put the south suburbs providence put the south suburbs on the map uh officially and then i kicked it up you know, sixty-yard field goal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, okay, so moving moving on, Robert. You you go. You you have a chance to play college sports. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. And um, you know, like many Puerto Ricans, you were a fabulous middle infielder. Am I right? Right. Yeah, I was. I I actually focused more on a, a football in college. I went to Millican University for a year. Then I transferred over to the University of Dubuque. And actually, ironically, the opposite happened. We couldn't win a game. So I have been on where you couldn't lose a game, and then I've been where you couldn't win a game. And both have taught lessons, right? Some lessons are different. But I enjoyed the experience because to me, having to playing sports was just a vehicle to get to where I wanted to go next anyway, because I was never going to be a four-year starter at UCLA anyways. (laughs) Well, but but do you think you were actually better at baseball? I do. I I do think I could have played. I had an opportunity to play at Butler. I declined it. Uh, it was a, uh, a mistake. I probably could have played minor league baseball if I wanted to. I could run. I was stealing bases. I could, you know, I was a little like Javi Baez before Javi Baez was Javi Baez. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and you can't, you, God's a fair man. You know, you can't tell <laughs> by the video, Dan, but Robert is not a vertically he's he's vertically challenged mm. um just like myself actually but uh <laughs> but the, his ability to perform at that level at quarterback with with his size um it, it, i i believe also helped you it, it, far more in life and to your point about taking what you learn in sports to be able to transfer it into success in the real world uh it, it, we're going to get to more on that in a few minutes but before we do talk a little bit about the experience that you had in finding out that you were diagnosed with cancer at, at you know at, at a young age and how did you deal with that and and talk us through about a little bit, a bit about that yeah um so i was 31 years old i believe it was 2011 it was uh june 14th at 10 34 p.m i get dragged into the uh, emergency room to the back you know um, nobody wants to hear that you have cancer right uh my first instinct was fear just like everyone else because i am a human uh my second instinct was a little anger and that anger turned into focus because i thought that uh i wasn't gonna let i wasn't gonna let this happen to me you know, um, going through that experience, and I, and I go back and look at the, all the sports experiences about uh, learning how to deal with adversity, right? 
um, understanding a game plan and executing it, you know, doing what the doctor tells you to do. Don't question. You never should question your priest or a doctor. All right. Always tell them the truth. (laughs) And, um, and then, uh, and then kind of just really focused on one day at a time, just like in sports, it's one play at a time. You can't score 40 points on one play. So, um, and then having all of my friends, of course, you came in and stayed with me for a little bit of time. You saw how it was. It, it, there yeah. were times where it looked like everything was going to be okay. And then there were times it looked like everything was not going to be okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, from my parents to my wife, to my in-laws, to my family, we've always had a pretty strong belief in our Catholic and Christian faith. So I just, uh, I just put it in, in God's hands and he, he has a mission and I'm just here to, to perform it. So you go through that, you survive leukemia, right? Uh, yeah. and, and, and you, you, you start, when, when do you start thinking about politics? Uh, because, you know, I was there with you and I remember, uh, you know, having those conversations, but you know, I don't think I've ever actually heard this, you know, this, the your actual answer to this too, because I remember talking about Robert. I think you would be great at politics, and you obviously had also agreed. But we also talked about the fact that if you were going to do it, you have to go all in and be really committed to it. Um, so talk about that sort of decision that you made, uh, and how that process went. You know, with someone like your wife, understanding that. What it, what, it, what it could potentially be like to officially immerse yourself into politics. Okay, yeah, that's, a, that's kind of a three part. The first one was where the inspiration came from. So I'd always thought about it, but you know, it, 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 life comes at you and you're figuring out you know, how to get to the next day. So I was doing some non-for-profit work I do. I go back and I talk to cancer patients who are in the same hospital that I came out of to remind them that um, that what is it? What is a what could be? How you can get over it, push through it. Look at a guy like me. I bring pictures of myself when I was there, and a woman told me that she had to sell her house and cash out her four hundred one k just so she could pay for her treatment, and it bothered me for a week. And finally, talked to my mom and said, "Man, this is really bothering me." And my mom's a, a very smart lady too, and she just said, "You got the, the only one way to do it is you got to change the law. There's only one way to change the law, is to propose a new one." So that was kind of the starting point. Two was at the Super Bowl with you. And uh, really, you know, when you're getting into politics, you got to have a lot of people to support you, just like a good team. If you got a bad offensive line, you're not going to have a good team. You got to have a good team everywhere. So hearing you guys talk about how uh, enthusiastic and exciting you guys were for me and the support gave me confidence to say, okay, I think this can work. And then the third one was uh, my 10 year anniversary was last September. And we drove down the, the coast from San Francisco down to San Diego. We spent some time with you guys. And me and my wife had, you know, eight, nine hours to kill. So we just kind of talked about all the scenarios of what could happen, how this could work out, what is the downside, what's the upside. And ultimately, it's about helping uh, focus the next generation's change in the political atmosphere. Because it's, you know, we're up to the plate now. Generation X, you're, you're on deck. And if we can't get people in there who agree with us, then we're going to have a lot of problems. That was freaking awesome, dude. Uh, so I, I want to make a couple points speechless. on that, too. So when I – yeah, for once in my life, I'm practically speechless. So you know, I remember talking to you about it when, in, right – as you, because you had that long drive from from Northern California, and you got to our house, I was like, "How did how did it go?" And and you're like, "She's in, you know, like, we're in," because I personally have, I don't think I could ever convince my wife to let me go into politics. <laughs> so I've I'm feeling like I am literally the support. Your your comments about support are are so right on and it's so true and as we're getting more involved in this i'm realizing just how much support it's going to take not you know not just your personal relationships but you really got to have a lot of support to take it to the next level so and i'm when i'm talking around like robert you realize that you know barack obama was a one-time you one-term u.s senator right and next is straight to the white house the the, the following president 
was is is Donald Trump, who had zero political office. So right. to Robert's point about the, the our our generation, it's already sort of opening up and giving us the the ability to make some of these changes and to yeah. look at politics differently. The Nancy Pelosi's of the world are 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 going to be gone. Uh, you know, they're the the career politicians. Is, is that is going to change and you know I argue with my mom uh, about this all the time she's like she just hates Donald Trump because she hates Donald Trump but I tell her all the time you know, like but for the things that Robert is mentioning and we're going to continue in a second here for those things to be in position to happen mm -hmm. there had to be a catalyst like Donald Trump right there had to be this you know and he he might not be the best communicator but he is the catalyst to, you know, not to use his phrase of draining the swamp, but, you know, our government does not operate extremely <laughs> efficiently. I think both sides of the aisle could agree on that. So as Robert and I were talking, I want to I want to share this story. So, Robert, you remember when we came up with what we're about to talk about? Yeah, I do. So we're on the phone, and, uh -huh. and, and we're like, I'm like, so how are you doing, Robert? He's like telling me all about the stuff he's doing on a daily basis. I'm like, Jesus, it's like a full time job, and you're also making money and earning a living to be able to pay your bills. I and I'm you know super impressed with everything that he's been doing, and he's like, yeah. So I, I want to have a party in on Memorial Day, and uh, you know just like uh, bringing in all all sides, you know, the basically focusing on the center, and we want to have some great speakers. And, and realizing that the far left is polarizing and the far right is polarizing, but most of us are right in the middle and we lean a little bit to the right or we sway a little left, but our, our pendulum only goes back and forth just a little off center, right? And I really want to bring people together, want to be like feel like a, you know, a Boy Scout jamboree. And I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm already looking at Southwest flights. A Boy Scout jamboree? Yeah, like, you know, it's just jamboree. I'm not sure I want to know what that is. <laughs> so so Robert brings up, says the word jamboree. I'm looking at Southwest flights because I want to be right. at this event. And I, and I have this epiphany. I'm like, Robert, I'll call you right back. So I hang up with him. I call, I call up GoDaddy and I buy GOPjamboree.com. Okay. And I... Call him back. It uh -huh. takes me a few minutes to get everything in order. Okay. And I call him back and I say, I just bought GOPjamboree.com. What do you think of that name? Okay. And Robert, you take it from there. What what happened from that point? <laughs> well, I I stopped. I was driving and I was like, I just kept saying it in my head. GOP Jamboree. Man, that is just, that's it. That's the, that's, that's the name. So I got immediately excited. And, uh, you know, I, I contacted all the political guys that I'm working with now, started uh, getting that name out there. And what it really is, is it's a get out the vote campaign because registrations are so far down right now. It's at the 30 percent of the registered voters are actually participating. And Thomas Jefferson said it best. We are a majority of people who participate. And if you don't participate, you right. are not you are not really being involved. Right, so right. we want to get a the best way to get people out, right, is to have a good party. And 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 Corey and I know how to throw a good party, and uh, <laughs> and that's that what I'm excited me. about it. And I was really when, once he told me that we started working on getting a website, getting our Facebook going, logo. So we're, we're we feel like we're there. We, we we definitely are there from a uh, it's official right so yeah it's official we're gonna post it all uh, all over something's brewing uh, you know gopjamboree.com. dot com uh, but you know, I want to make sure that you know to to your points Robert like the first reaction you know Dan and I talk about this on the show all the time and that is. I'm right of center, Dan's left of center, and together we're going to blaze the trail down the middle. Is that that? Am I? Am, I'm I'm not wrong in assuming and trying to believe that that is ultimately what our goal is by creating this movement of the GOP jamboree. Because the the first phrase GOP that and that still has a polarizing uh, feeling to it to most of the United States. Would you agree? Yes. Um, and I understand what, what, what you mean by that. Is, it's, is, it, a, is it a label? It's, it's a label, basically. And um, what, of our, what of our discussions and many discussions about coming into the middle really starts with, let's talk about what we have in common instead of talking about what we don't have in common. Because last time I went on a date, I didn't ask my wife, 
what is it that you don't like? Because I usually ask her, what is it that you like? Because we start from there. And we use the word GOP because that's kind of where we are from a little leaning right perspective. If we had to make a decision today of one of the two, that's without question. Correct. And then, you know, and if if you could take, if you look even further into GOP, it's a nickname given to the Republican Party in the uh, 18, I think it was 1858, uh, for Lincoln's announcing it to run for president, they call them the GOP. And it's just a nickname, technically. And but from a historical standpoint, you know, you people probably don't know, and they certainly you're not going to hear this on CNN. Like the 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 day that you get a history of the GOP on CNN <laughs> will be the day that I die. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. for example, you know, the, the they literally was started with the abolishment of slavery okay yes. the gop yeah. put the first african american governor in place the first woman in congress uh the gop congress passed the 19th amendment giving women the right to vote uh the first hispanic senator the first women woman to serve both in the house and the senate uh, a gop supreme justice struck down born v- brown versus education ending segregation in schools uh, G- geo president eisenhower signed the civil rights act uh, civil rights act Act was passed against a democratic filibuster the GOP first Asian first Asian senator first female Supreme Court justice and then you know the Ronald Reagan's of the world right in in terms of breaking down the walls against the Soviet Union so I mean so when you think about that the, I GOP shouldn't be polarizing right but we're not no, you're not gonna hear that from the left-wing media <laughs> well no, and, and I and I agree, and, and I think it's uh it's on us to to make it known, right? To to spread that news as it is not something what you think it is. It's not your dad's GOP, right? That's what my my message is. Yeah, it's the it's the inclusive GOP. If you think that the GOP is not inclusive, and so Dan, as you, I remember when I told you the first. And I and I threw out the GOP jamboree to um to some some close relatives that are, are way further to the left, mm. and they was like, well, they liked the sound of it first as well. I think yeah. you like the sound of it, and now it's I uh, well, I have mixed feelings about it let's, because let's because it, it because it feels like it requires a history lesson. Yeah, and I've had on Facebook the history lesson conversation with so many people, and it often doesn't go well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because the grand old party or the Republican party of Lincoln's time isn't the same one as today. Correct. So as a left-leaning guy, mm-hmm. when I hear GOP, I think Republican. When I think Republican, I think modern, you know, George Walker Bush. Right. Post-Reagan era Republican, not 18 whatever. Right. Of course. You know what I mean? Um so my my fear is that the GOP doesn't communicate the centrist attitude that it maybe potentially could. Correct. So we've thought about that a lot, too. And don't be in and let's not mistake this, Dan. We know that this is going to be a lot of work to do right. what we want it to do. Right. But if you think of but- it, I think of an idea of a concept of the you said grand old party. Right. But what if what if. 10 years from now, GOP stand for the great one party. Do you follow me? So rebrand, right? Rebrand. So, so. But, but also, <laughs> but, but GOP doesn't necessarily mean Republican, right? It's just a term. It's like Robert said, it's a label, right? Correct. So yeah, you can, you can rebrand it as a new kind of centrist attitude that that may include republicans and democrats absolutely and and a reason why i'm still you know you hey you know that remember that song ain't nothing good ain't no one gonna break in my stride dan i do i vaguely remember that song robert we ain't letting him break our stride here okay (laughs) so and the reason why i know that is that i had a you know a a conversation with a much further left person than myself Mm. um and we were, I was talking a little bit about the idea. And I said to him, don't you find it a little bit disappointing that you and I are cannot stand on a political stage holding hands and putting our arms in the air 
because we stand for the same things. You would say, no, 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 I'm, I, I, I'm a Democrat. And I would say, no, 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 I'm a Republican. Right. But we agree far more than you agree with the far left and far more than I agree with the alt-right. Yes, and that's, absolutely. And, absolutely. And the fact that we right. can't be like it's not you know i hate the word safe place but the fact that that can't be a safe place because it is so polarizing right and i know that sounds like a big change the world idea because it fucking is right okay and but there's enough people out there to your comment about thomas jefferson that there is a majority i I believe the majority of people yes are are in line with this yeah you know, and we're not going to have success creating a third party, right? The Libertarian Party is a huge movement, but they haven't had a major candidate no. that's won any major seat. No. When you want to win a major seat, you got to go far left or far right, and you got to alienate yourself of from the center to a certain point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, I I I love it. I think it's a great idea, and there's no turning back. Yeah. When's this jamboree then? Well. Robert, you can, can hit on yeah, that. Yeah, so, um, well, the, the, the concept, Dan, is that we would like it to travel, right? Come from place to place in Illinois, California. Um, obviously, we have uh, uh, quarantine rules, shutdown, shelter in place <laughs> rules in place right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, however, exactly. in Illinois, the governor has uh, exceeded his reach, according to the U- Illinois Constitution, sorry. So there are a lot of people who are uh, fighting back. So... Right now, it looks like it's going to be sometime August, between August and, and the general election. We'd like to have three or four. We've got some good keynote speakers who are interested to come on board. We don't want to give those names up yet because we haven't uh, you know, finalized our agreements, but you'll know who they are. Nice. And, uh, and we just, we, what we really want to do, yeah, no, no, not Nancy. <laughs> what we really want to do is infuse culture into our GOP movement and infuse um, what I call the, the, the fiesta, right? Everyone, you take clients out to places and you have drinks and have fun so that you can get to know each other so you can do business. Well, what's the difference between politics and a client? Those are our clients, the constituents. Wow, well said. D- does this guy have this guy's politics good. written all over him? Right? Or what, huh? We should get behind this guy. I, I, I have a <laughs> feeling we will. Um, so... All right, so moving on a little bit more, Robert. So, like, we don't want to. This is this is we're we're coming back to this. Uh, check out gopjamboree.com. You'll see some of us on the website. Be sure to check out the GOP Creed, uh, which is you know a lot of what we stand for. Um, I, we think you're going to love it. So, Robert, it, do you mind? Uh, we'd like you to join the rest of the show. Give us a little. You know, we'd like you to co-host the rest of the show. We're going to get in a little bit more politics and then uh, hit up Brooklyn's Bridge, and we'll let you get back to your party. Is that okay absolutely okay so first you sent me a picture the other day about the shot of the people at the beach yes do you also realize in california um that the homeless population not a big deal you could have spent time living at the beach have you seen pictures of venice beach in the homeless population no okay but prior to it reopening literally yesterday people were getting tax paying non-homeless people we're not allowed to go to the beach, no, right? Right. But homeless people, no problem. Uh, so, and G- Gavin Newsom's done a, I think, a decent job. He's mm-hmm. at least one of the governors that hasn't been afraid to give the Trump administration a little bit of credit, which I thought was shocking. Yeah. Right. You, yeah. Can, we can admit that. Um, however, did you see that he also agreed for in the PPP? Uh, part of the stimulus package to grant over 125 million dollars in stimulus money to illegal aliens in California which I thought was a little bit of a polarizing thing. Yeah. So I didn't necessarily agree with that. Um, in general, he also made a workers' comp uh, play last week about making coronavirus effectively available to go for workers' comp claims. Can you imagine what that's going to do to a, to an organization, right, a, a small business? Bring it down, baby. <laughs> right. Wow. Um, which I, so I thought that was um, that's a, a little interesting. Um Robert, so you you obviously saw Operation Gridlock in Michigan. Uh, can you talk us talk to us a little bit about what sort of the overall underlying feelings are in Illinois? Because you talked about it earlier. You know, 
Illinois is a blue state, but a Chicago Democrat, quote unquote, we're talking about labels, a Chicago Democrat is nothing like a California liberal. Uh, mm, so you, right. know, you know what I mean by that? Yeah. I've talked about that in previous shows. But what's it like in Illinois? I um, mean, you're not that far away from Michigan. Is there some some feelings of unrest? And, and what does that feel like out there? Well, start with Michigan. You know, you see it on the news. They have a lot of guys protesting getting down on the city hall steps, uh, exercising their First Amendment rights. Because in theory, if you look this down and break it all the way down to its um, simplest form, it is a violation of your First Amendment right to assemble, your First Amendment right to freedom of speech and assemble. Um, so they're, they're, they're protesting for their rights. I agree with them to a certain degree because um, there are rules and processes in the government. For example, you've got to have your General Assembly or your Congress deliberate on how to act next. That has not happened in Illinois or Michigan. So there's only one perspective, apparently. And the last time I checked the history books, that's referred to as your honor or your kingness. <laughs> are you right? <laughs> Get it. Your kingness. You know, and, and yeah. you, you brought up something there that I also want to make a comment on because it, you, you didn't say the word freedom, but that that's obviously a, a word that is being used a lot through this ex, this experience mm -hmm. because no one is forcing anyone that is older in age or has underlying uh, health issues mm -hmm. to get up out of their house and go to the beach right all true right so so you, my like we wake up every day pre coronavirus and get on the freeway and there's a chance that we will die true right so there's a level of you understanding the facts, understanding what could potentially happen, mm -hmm. and will we all agree that you know yes, there is a chance that a, a perfectly healthy twenty five year old could get coronavirus and pass away, mm -hmm. but there's also a higher likelihood that a perfectly healthy twenty five year old is going to overdose from opioids. Yeah, right. But we don't make them shelter in place. <laughs> you know, does right. that you know what I'm saying? I guess I do. I'm not yeah. trying to bang yeah. the freedom drum, but right, right, right. Like, go to the beach at your own risk. Right. Stay away from one another. <gasps> Don't give everybody a kiss. Right. Like it's <laughs> exactly. like is that? But if but it, but if you make a comment like that, I want people to die, and I disagree with that. Interesting. You know, does that? Uh, but uh, does, do you do you follow me on the freedom I think thing? I follow you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, the jump Robert in on that really quick. Yeah, I do. And it's uh, people feel like their freedoms are being taken away. And to a certain extent, they are based on the safety of everyone involved. However, everybody who's in sales or ever been in sales, you're a problem solver. That's how you earn their business. And we're not trying to solve the problem. I've been reading all kinds of things about antibody tests. One of, uh, you know, one of my good friends is a, is a primary care physician. He's been shut down for 60 days. My question, even to the Illinois Republicans through uh, one of the senators I have a relationship with, with is why are primary care physicians administering antibody tests? And if you come positive for an antibody test, you get a scan decal, just like if you're 21 and they scan your ID to go to a bar. We, we, we adhere to those limitations. Why don't we implement that into our already structure? So if you've got one of these scans, you can go to the beach. If you don't, well, you're taking a risk. Yep. Well, I think we, we just also described how hard it is to really be in politics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was like, boy, when he listening to what he just said there, I almost got a headache. Right. But this may be our future that he's describing, right? 100%. Where there's mm -hmm. some sort of way. God, I hate to even say this because it's going to start to sound really Orwellian. But yeah, like, yeah. You get tested and then you get some special card or QR code yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Special tattoo. Yeah, yeah, God, yeah. I don't know. Oh, it's getting yeah, worse. What phase? What, what phase level? Right. You know, what, what zone are you allowed to go in? Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know, I'm not a dystopian futuristic guy. War is guy, peace. But, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more as we continue. So unrest going on. Uh, you, you, before we move into a little bit more about China, I, I assume you saw that the Michael Flynn situation uh, uh, Dan and Robert, did you see that a little bit? Because that was kind of big news. The Mueller investigation, I, Michael I Flynn, that whole China, thing, uh, Russian collusion. You no. didn't hear about Russian no. collusion? Okay. I don't pay attention to All the right. Russians well, anymore. We're, we're going we're gonna to leave it there because over the la next couple weeks, <laughs> some major shit's going to continue yeah. to come out. 
So another another topic that I, I wanted to make sure we hit on, you know, the obviously Joe Biden is is having a hard time. It seems like connecting with this new sort of realm of technology. Oh, Let's just call it that. Um, and you know, it looks like he's obviously not going to be able to skirt the whole hashtag Me Too hypocrisy. Did you know that CNN waited 24 days to cover the allegations? By contrast, they they published nearly 700 articles about the allegations against Brett Kavanaugh in 19 days. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So um, we'll see what happens. Obviously, I, I'm you know when you say the things that Joe Biden has said about believing women no matter what and things of that right. nature, <laughs> it does. It, it's impossible not it's, to be uh, hypocritical. Yeah. However, right. I will say this. They the the Trump campaign has to be careful with how much they hammer that because Trump does have plenty of women under yeah. NDAs. Yes, so, he does. Uh, but we'll see if there's an additional smoking gun. I thought that Larry King interview was kind of you know that came out of nowhere and how yeah. interesting it was that that CNN had that footage, but never someone had to go in and basically okay, steal it. Go in the yeah, which I thought was sort of sort they get of out of the basement. Um, okay, so bef- now where I want to move into a little bit more on China. Uh, uh, for the rest of the part of the show, so and, and believing that you can use China as Brooklyn Br- Brooklyn's bridge, I'm going to attempt to do so. So with that, we're <laughs> going to cross over to Brooklyn's bridge for the last part of the show. We hope you stick around because then you're going to know. All right. So do you remember episodes ago, producer Dan, when I told our listeners that I was going to be rewriting the Taylor Swift song? Of course. Okay. Yes. So uh, you know, one thing that's important to me is that I a lot of times I say shit. That <laughs> takes me a couple episodes to follow through on. Well, reality takes time. You takes know. time. Right. But I typically follow through. Absolutely. All right. So before we get to my Taylor Swift the coronavirus parody video, I do have to tell a quick story. And because Robert was instrumental in this as well. But so Uh-oh. I literally I finished the, the video or finished this the song and I'm getting ready to, to shoot the video. Um, I make I literally I make multiple calls to all kinds of people because I thought it was going to be good. Mm-hmm. I I call my mentor in business. I call mm-hmm. my lawyer. <laughs> I call multiple Chinese Americans and two separate PR firms. All right, just okay. in case, right? Just to make sure that I'm all protected. And like I said, I also upped my insurance policies. So that was during the day. I go to bed. Okay. That night, two thirty a.m. Literally, fall. A smoke alarm goes off, false alarm. Oh. Okay, but wakes me up and I fly out of bed like it's like <laughs> nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. <laughs> two thirty in the morning. I so I can't go back to sleep. So I start searching copyright law. Oh god! For two and a half hours, looking at parity protection, fair use laws. You know, blah blah blah. Finally, wake you know, fall asleep for a little while. Start wake up at twenty minutes. Look at my my emails, and I get. Right at the same time, like at about 3 a.m., I got an email from the universe. And you remember how I talk about my emails from the universe? Okay. Okay. And, and you're this, already awake when it comes I'm in. I'm already awake. So it's okay. like I go to check work emails from like, oh, I might as well get some work done. Uh, right. Can't miss notes from the universe. So. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay. Well, and by the way, my 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 mentor says like, "What's your goal on this?" I was like, "Well, that's a great question. First and foremost, I I just I'm unhappy with right. what's gone on. Right. And I'm unhappy with the Communist Party of China in the way that I believe they handled it. Mm-hmm. The United States hasn't operated perfectly, but what came first, the chicken or the egg? Did New York start the coronavirus and the rest of our country get screwed over because New York sucked? <laughs> right? No. Okay. Right. So, but so that's my main goal, mm-hmm. and I also thought that it could be a bipartisan connectivity be against the old communist, you know, mm-hmm. enemies of the past. Right. right. Okay. So anyway, here's what I. So, but I'm a little scared because I'm also doing the research about how much China can take you down. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I'm a little There's nervous. That. All right. kinds of stuff. Right. Anyway, so this is the email I get from the universe. There comes a time, Corey, in every life when the valiant choice is made to take a con- courageous stand for oneself in spite of consequences against those who have behaved irresponsibly. And this is good. 
Sometimes afterwards, it ultimately dawns on all, however, that what they might be most concerned with are their own responsibilities, and this is trebly good. Roll over Beethoven, hit me Amadeus, let's waltz Matilda, the universe. Now, the second two parts of that are not as scary. Okay, but, but the wait, first part, it's there so comes specific. a time, Corey, in every life when the valiant <laughs> choice is made to, to take a courageous stand for oneself in spite of consequences against those who have behaved irresponsibly, and this is good. I got you that email that at 3 a.m. Oh after doing research on copyright law because the following <laughs> day I was about to send out to the world this YouTube video, oh, yeah? Taylor Swift parody. Here it goes. We're not going to listen to the whole thing. Now, if you can, you can't, you can't read this, but it says this is not an attack on the Chinese people. It's a parody about the Communist Party of China and their handling of the coronavirus. We don't like your little games. Don't like your BS stage. The role that you have played in the world. No, we don't like you. By role research on our dime. Why did you have to lie? We could have used more time in the world. No, we don't like you. But we'll get smarter, we'll go farther This is the last time Economies will rise again They do it all the time COVID-19 came from the red But it is colorblind Check it out once, better check it twice Oh, ooh, this was more than just the flu Yeah, more than just the flu Still staying at home but running down The things to really do Highly recommend checking that out On our website You can find it on YouTube as well Robert, you're instrumental and helping me feel like I wanted this to get out there. I, I, I imagine you love it. Do, do, you, do you love it? <laughs> Robert, you love it, right? Yes, you love it, right? I, we, listen, we love it. And this is how I know it's going to work because my wife and sister-in-law who's quarantining with us have been walking around the house singing it for a week. <laughs> so I will admit this though. So this, I sent out my first tweet. So this, we're on Saturday, May 10th, right? Um, on Sunday, May 3rd, I sent my first tweet. Mm. Okay. Ever? Yeah. Pretty oh, much. Okay. My first tweet from Corey Paws. Would you believe that somebody has a Twitter handle, Something's Bruin, since 2010? What the hell? Oh, anyway, I got to buy that from them. Uh, so I sent out my first tweet on Sunday, and, you know, Robert's been far more, you know, involved with social media over the years, but it's. Still so uncomfortable for me, <laughs> but I am so committed to getting this video to the masses uh -huh. because I think that it is, it says a great message. And for those of you that don't watch it, I'll tell you what happens at the end. So at the end, there's a second hook. The first hook is great about, ooh, this was more than just the flu. Yeah, more than just the flu. Well, the second hook that you sh won't go out of your brain is, we cannot trust Xi Jinping, but you can trust me. This will be the rebirth of American dreams. We cannot trust Xi Jinping. Okay, so just watch the video. But that's <laughs> the end of our video. It talks about the things that you should be doing that you, you, we sort of forgot about during quarantine, about being with your families. And if you don't get the subliminal messages of the whole video, then I feel sorry for you. But <laughs> um, I genuinely believe, I know Robert does too, that this is – like hits home on so many areas and we believe that everybody should see this video because at the end of the day if you can't agree that communists the communist party of china fuck this thing up first <laughs> then, yeah. then we will never agree on anything right. in the United States. Right. So if you can't like if we can't be Americans first and protect our interests against a communist country, it's government, not right. the Chinese people. No. Right? No. Okay. Communist government, yes. Communist government sure. in China that doesn't have any freedoms compared to ours. Yeah, no. Okay? So if we can't agree on that, then we're going to keep trying, aren't we, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that and Dan, 
Doesn't Corey love saying Xi Jinping? Yes. He just loves it. He loves, <laughs> he loves it. saying Xi Jinping. Well, he just when, loves it. When, hey, how often I, do you wake up with his voice in your head saying well, Xi Jinping? And you know what? It's not like oh. uh, it's not like <laughs> I worm. I know I haven't written any original songs ever because I don't okay. know how to write music, but I have created some decent lyrics, and that is one of my favorite That's, lines I've ever created sh- sure. because the beat is like. It, and I had that song done, but that part wasn't feeling good. And all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute, Xi Jinping spelled differently, but when you say it, it works perfect. Right. <laughs> yes. By the way, Robert, yes. I, you, I don't know if you saw. I think you saw that second video. Dan and I had such a great time shooting that video that we did another one two nights later for my company, which was also has a great message to it too. But all right, so Robert, again, we appreciate you taking the time, uh, folks. Make sure you check out the the website and. and and get those views up because I need it to go viral. I want it to go viral because I think it's one hell of a message. So Robert, in the fact that it is mother's day, I want to give you a, an opportunity to say some, a shout out to your, to your mom. Um, hopefully she can, she can you know listen to the show. Um, so give, give her a shout out. I'll go and then we'll be done. Perfect. Well, mom, I want to wish you the best mother's day ever. We've had uh, 42 of them now. And uh, I wouldn't be here without you. And I would be remiss if I didn't bring up my wife because unfortunately she always gets the short end of the stick. Her birthday's on Christmas Eve and our daughter's birthday's on Mother's Day. So my (laughs) wife, I love you to death and I would rather spend, no one else rather than you to spend this time. Uh, Hey, amen to that. Same for myself. My my mother who, you know, we both know each other's mothers and my mother has got to be one of our most loyal listeners uh which probably the first subscriber (laughs) which if you can't have your mom listening then you're in big trouble but mom same thing from me you've done a did a fantastic job Uh, i would i would argue you know robert both of our fathers worked extremely hard and might not have been around as much because they were working so hard so both of our mothers had to do an amazing job of raising us you know you got siblings too that are that are strong strong people but thank you mom thank you to my wife uh it's been amazing to watch you through quarantine as well because i would never want to be a teach from home you know, it seems <laughs> it's way too difficult. Uh, it's amazing that we are still married and getting along as well as we are, uh, because this has definitely been difficult. But happy Mother's Day to everyone out there that is a mother. Uh, we appreciate everything you guys do. And with that, please continue to keep a positive attitude no matter what, because when you do, something's always brewing. Corey Pons is back at quarterback.